Digital game use is on the rise in the classroom. Across all grade levels and subject areas, teachers are increasingly using games as a classroom tool, as a motivator, a tool to increase engagement and participation, but also as a learning platform. Traditionally, digital games used in the classroom tended to behave either as drill and kill edutainment tools, Math Blaster for example, or as direct rewards for good classroom behavior, but rewards that didn't usually add anything to classroom learning. In my childhood, this meant playing Oregon Trail if we finished our work fast enough. These usages are fine, but they only scratch the surface of what digital games are capable of. Dr. Nicola Witten details a number of game uses in her 2014 book, Digital Games and Learning. She outlines eight fundamental uses for digital games, many of which are fascinating sub-studies in educational game use. We can learn from game communities, how players meet online to talk about games, form guilds, and socialize in game environments. We can learn through game creation, constructing and expanding our own knowledge as we build our own games from the ground up. As it informs my research, however, Ms. Witten references learning from playing games. This involves the informal learning we do through the process of play itself, usually in the context of an entertainment-driven product. We pick up on the civil costs of extended war as our countries battle each other in civilization. We get a sense of the ambiance of Renaissance Italy as we slip through the shadows in Assassin's Creed. Dr. Valerie Shute expands on this idea and calls the notion of learning from within the confines of a normal game environment stealth learning. It's this concept of stealth learning that our research group hoped to explore in the world of Minecraft. Minecraft is a sandbox, block-based game that relies on the simple game mechanic of breaking and building blocks of different in-game materials. It's an interesting intersection point in the world of games. Minecraft has experienced extreme commercial success, but has also been seen as an interesting educational product almost since its initial release. To our research group, we saw Minecraft as a gateway to spatial geometry concepts in mathematics. It's a natural fit. Players work their way through a block-based world and are constantly forced to use and develop their ideas of perimeter, area, volume, and other simple geometry concepts. Though they may not be aware of the words to describe the concepts they're experiencing, they're constantly forced to evaluate the blocks in their surroundings for estimations of these values. How much wood do I need to build that fence? How high can I build my castle with the supplies I have on hand? Players learn to estimate and in some ways actualize these concepts without being formally taught their definitions. We saw this as a masterclass in stealth learning. We had access to grade 3 and 4 students who were attending a week-long Minecraft summer camp at our university. We developed a program to target spatial geometry concepts, including a number of evaluation items. A formal pen and paper pre-test and post-test, an integrated stealth assessment item within the Minecraft world itself, and a survey item for the students and their parents. And we saw some interesting mixed results. Although our pretest and post-test averages were almost identical, there was a noticeable difference in the way students were approaching spatial geometry concepts in their in-game environments. Their structures became bigger, and our camp instructors observed a change in the scope, scale, and terminology students were using to refer to their structures. They seemed to be gaining an understanding of spatial geometry. It just wasn't showing up on paper. In the end, we determined that this study, and even the structure of our intervention in general, showed significant promise, but that it needed to take place over a much broader time period. Shoving this many formal school items into a fun summer camp may not have been the best experimental medium. At some point, we hope to continue this project in a classroom environment. This would both help extend the time frame for our study, 
and potentially allow us to use a more experimental scientific format. My name is Quinn McCashin. Thanks for watching my lightning talk. Stay safe.